Hello once again. Okay, I'm looking for a fuse. I have a problem with the backup lights. I'm looking for the fuse, but instead of looking through 20 different uh, schematic pages, I come to the power distribution circuit. Now, when you come to certain areas of these type of schematics, sometimes it's for one or two models. So you have to be aware of that, which line you're following. Also, you have to be aware of, is it manual or is it or automatic transmission? Different lines. So let's say I'm looking for <clears throat> the back, the back lamp, uh, backup li uh, lamps, lights. <clears throat> so there is a idea where some people say, you know what, when you look at schematic, you start from top and you go to bottom. That's not 100% true all the time. When you're troubleshooting and you know what you're looking for, let's say I have a problem with the reverse lights, with the backup lights. Am I going to start from the top, from every fuse, every fuse, and go down? No. You look for whatever is related to your problem, like I stress many times. If I have a problem with the reverse lights or left backup light, boom, I'm going to go to that symbol, those components. Go back up, see where it's coming from. So I'm not going from top to bottom. Actually, I'm going from bottom to top. It depends what you're looking for, what the situation is in the scenario. So I have a problem with the reverse lights. So let's go this way. So now that we know where it's coming from, let's go and make sure we have the right path, the right ones. We're looking for a fuse. We don't know which fuse. So we come to this fuse backup lights over here fuse to a uh, fuse for 25 amps let's make sure we have the right path the right one so we have to get from here we have to get to the reverse lights we come over here we have two paths like i just mentioned manual transmission and automatic since we have automatic we will disregard this one and we will take this path we're still going through the pink wire and a pink wire and a pink wire but still the path is different. So we're going to this uh, park neutral position switch because it is an automatic. In that event, when we when it toggles, when you have the park neutral position switch in, in uh, reverse, right? You don't have it in park or neutral. These will come over here. These switches will be close to this position. This will be close to this position. What does that do? It allows now this circuit, pink, be connected to gray. Gray, and it says over here, or pink, depending on which one you're following. If I'm following the gray, I'm following the gray. If I'm following the pink, I'm going from the pink. We're coming from here, follow the blue arrows, which I did. Now I come to another fuse. So this is the second fuse in the system, but a lower fuse, 15 amps. Now we vehicle backup. Well, now we come over here to a light green one. Now comes a little tricky part. Left backup and right backup lamp. Okay, it seems like it's correct that we're going the right way. So if I want to find um, the fuses, I will go to a 15 amp fuse and I will go to a 25 amp fuse. Okay, why? Let's say I have a pickup, right? I'm following this one. But, however, let's say you don't have a pickup. Let's say you have a utility. So you see different models, different variations of the cars are different lines. So therefore, if I have a utility, I will disregard this line. I will come down here, here, and to these. So always pay attention to the one in the, the brackets or the parentheses, what it is. That's the line that you follow. Let's take another example. Here's one over here. So we come over here. You come over here. Now we have to pay attention which one we're following. Light green with a black stripe. Now we come to either four door or two door. Do you have a two door? If you have a two door, you're coming down this path. If you're coming down a four door, you are coming down this path. And when you come down this path, see this? Then you have something different. Automatic transmission shift lock solenoid and a transfer case shift control. But in this path, in the two door, 
you have just a transfer case shift and just a stoplight you have a stoplight here also but this is the extra line right here so you have to make sure to go down the right path okay so let's say over here now okay if I'm looking for the air conditioner compressor clutch relay, we're not we're not looking for a fuse. We're looking for a relay. Still use this type of diagram because it's easier to find and easier to locate. Okay? Now we come to C. C came from a from a point. Let's see if C is up here. C is, is up here. So C came actually from B. B turned into C ignition. Let me turn out so you can see. This over here became this. Now we follow this, and I have to zoom in, like I said, because, like I said, so many years of diagrams, the vision is not what it was. So now I go over here, and we go into a 10 amp fuse. But we're not worried about a fuse. We're, we're looking for a relay. Sure enough, we come to a relay, a uh, air conditioner compressor clutch relay. Which pin? Pin two. What about the fogger? In a utility truck, we come here. We come to which pin? Looks like um, 88, I think. 88, 86, one of them. And it goes over here, and it goes to this one. So now we come to what else? Daytime running lamps. Which pin? Pin 2. This was a utility. This is an envoy. Daytime running lights. Pin 2. Pin 2. What do we see? This fuse, this fuse is responsible for three systems, at least, at least. So therefore, air conditioner, compressor clutch relay doesn't work, but the daytime running lamps work. Then the fuse has to be good, or if you have an envoy. If you have a utility and you have the rear defogger relay working, but you don't have the AC compressor clutch really working, you know the fuse is good. So that's how you go about it. Anyway, like I said, make sure there is no standard rule of always going from top to bottom to look for something in the schematic. There is no rule to go from left to right, right to left. There is nothing like that. If I'm looking for, let's say any, you take any example, parking lamp relay right am i going to start from this fuse this fuse this fuse this fuse no absolutely not i'm going to find something that's associated related to what i have to deal with which is the parking lamps okay so i look at all these symbols like on parking lamps uh-huh this has something to do with what i'm troubleshooting i'm going to come over here and say okay pin three pin two of what of the relay now i have to go back up it goes through a fuse. Now I'm not going to go in this direction. Why? Because I'm looking for a B plus to feed this fuse. HVAC fuse going in this direction. No. This fuse is not feeding this fuse. It's not the 12 volt line. What about the other ones? Are these a 12 volt? No. Where do I go? Probably go over here to D. And that's where the 12 volts comes from. So you see... No standard rule, no standard rule. That's what I want to uh, express and stress, that you always start from here, here, here. No, that's not the case. Anyway, like I said, I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to the other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, and the other one, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. If you don't see anything that I've done, go to the channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Maybe you'll see probably the relays in the circuit in the car where I test them, and you'll understand the theory much better. So, anyway, the main point is always pay attention to the rating of the fuse. Okay? Like I said, this one is fuse number one. After the switch, when it closes, you have fuse number two which one popped or which one blew you have to go and measure 12 volts over here if i have 12 volts at this this is the key point the key point i want to know if this switch is good i want to know but to get to it is a fiasco 
a catastrophe. So what am I going to do? I'm going to find a point that's connected to the, to this, which is this one. This one over here. Okay? When this comes over here, follow the arrows, come over here, come over here. If this switch is closed, engaged, or activated, call it whatever you want. If the pink is now connected to the gray wire, right? You could do a continuity test, but... What's easier to go? Follow the line and see if we have a component that's easy to find. Sure enough, we come to a what? A fuse. A fuse is easy to find. So guess what? If I have 12 volts over here, and I have 12 volts before it, but I have 12 volts after it, doesn't that mean that this is engaged? Absolutely. So you know the switch is engaged, the switch is in the right position. And therefore, the lights should be up should be on in backup now which side of the fuse should i go does it matter 12 volts here or after the fuse no as long as i have 12 volts 12 volts coming from after the switch i know that all this is good what can i do in a shortcut i come to the schematic i come over here fuse number one i come to the switch i come over here boom I don't have to look for this fuse. As soon as I come to this fuse, a 15 amp fuse vehicle backup, I go over here and this is the only point I have to measure. Once I measure this point, I know this is good. I know that, oops, this is good. I mean, this is good. Wire is good. Wire is good. And this fuse for sure was good because otherwise I wouldn't have 12 volts all over here. Anyway, thanks for watching and hope this was informative. Please give a like if you liked it.